heavy, misty rain. There may be a biting cold wind, but a really warm welcome ashore here for the ninth All Blacks as they come to Otley. Otley, a quaint market town in Wharfdale in Yorkshire, hosting a touring team for the very first time. Well, the All Blacks come here in confident mood, having won all seven of their seven matches so far, and of course with their first international victory under their belt already. But of course, Northern memories go back to 1972 and that historic victory by North West Counties at Workington over the All Blacks, and four of those heroes are in the North team today. Well, the North, of course, are pinning a lot on this match, and England hopes are high. Well, with only a week to the England International at Twickenham, of course, and a lot of the players in the North side will be hoping to stake their claims for the teams announced this weekend. But the All Blacks, well, they've shown, haven't they, how clinically efficient they can be at playing rugby, and there'll be an exceptional performance that will down the All Blacks' colours today. The Northern Division based on the all-conquering Lancashire side with 10 from that county including the whole of their back division except Alan Old who comes into the side without playing county rugby for Yorkshire this season. And he partners one of his former England scrum halves in Steve Smith. A wealth of experience up front emphasised by the remarkable fact that the pack includes five England captains in Dixon, Cotton who's back after injury, Neary, Utley and the reigning England captain and leader today Bill Beaumont. It's this pack that's the cornerstone of English hope today. So the final moment of inspiration for the All Blacks in the Harker. The All Blacks team with all 15 players having taken part in their convincing victory over Scotland, including Donaldson, who came on as replacement that day for Loveridge, who's still injured. An 80-minute side spearheaded by a dynamic back row trio who'll test the North's mobility. Five players who took part in the game against the North last year when they won by just three points, including Andy Hayden, who plays his eighth consecutive game today. From Scotland, the referee today, Alan Hosey, two internationals he was in charge of last season as the North in the red shirts, white shorts, start this match into the face of a nasty, gusting wind with quite a lot of rain, heavy drizzle still coming down on the pitch. So a side that carries great hopes for England today. At the back there is Tony Neary alongside Ken Stewart. Just about on the All Blacks 10 metre line. Dalton's throw. And this game will be determined by the forward battle. Donaldson to Eddie Dunn. Slemon. Mike Slemon, one of nine internationals in this side. Hayden in the middle. Donaldson to Dunn. through once again now it's Utley Utley playing on the flank as he did for the Lions in South Africa in 74 and tremendous support coming from the crowd here for this Northern Division effort great commitment already and that takes the pressure off for the moment last man up is Bill Beaumont nominated already as England's captain at Twickenham Steve Smith, one of the four players from that heroic Northwest Counties side, but under pressure this time from Donaldson. It's Ken Stewart picking it up, gets the pass into Donaldson. Back comes Steve Smith, the ball loose, Carlton has it. And that's courageous. Carlton had to cover right behind his own goal there bravely and putting in a good clearance the man who keeps Peter Squires out of this side and is a front runner for the wing position for England Utley plenty of height at the tail for the North 
Atley and Mexted be having a rare old tussle. Not in straight, so scrummage in 15. Donaldson, another sniping run, but the referee calls him back for not straight into the scrummage. So, free kick, old to take it. And a, certainly not a kicker's day. With the wind still blowing in varying directions too. But Alan Old is uh, not attempting to kick a goal, but playing it down the touchline. 34-year-old Alan Old. So it's Beaumont alongside Fleming, Hayden alongside Jim Siddall, and Mexted alongside Utley. The three key points of contact in the line-out. And it's the North that win it. Colin White fed that one back. Old to Tony Bond. Neary in support. It's there for the North. Beaumont has it. O'Brien, Carlton outside him. That's the oral winger now. Across comes Bernie Fraser. Wilson gets in the tackle. Good thrusting attack on the right flank. Steve Smith just a pat on the head for John Carlton, his Lancashire colleague. So into the All Blacks 22. Down from Hayden. Donaldson in trouble, the North come tearing through. Jim Siddall trying to set it up to feed it back. It's the All Blacks goal line in the background. So about 15 metres out. Clean strike, Smith, Utley standing up. Steve Smith appealing for Ken Stewart being offside there. But it's another scrummage for a knock-on. Real pressure now to test the All Blacks as close to their own goal line as that. Smith once again then. Dixon channeling it. Old Bond on the crash ball. Good tackle there by Donaldson, but it's taken on by Peter Dixon, drives head first towards the line. Ten metres out, Smith switches to Neary. Dixon on his elbow. Smith again, O'Brien. Once more they have it, old from Smith. Throw for Wright and Carlton to chase, it's Fraser that goes down to save the day for the All Blacks. Bernie Fraser, the left winger for New Zealand, after consistent pressure, but a penalty has been given to the North in front of the All Blacks post. There may well have been some obstruction which brought it, because there's the position that gives Alan Old the easiest of chances of three points and a chance for the North to take the lead with the first points of the match. And you can get some idea of just how strong this wind is because Tony Neary has come up to hold the ball for Alan Old. <laughs> Makes it safe. And the capacity crowd of 10,000 here thronging this Utley ground are thrilled with those three points that take the North into the lead after 19 minutes of this first half. Well, this was the build-up, the concerted pressure that the North were putting on that produced this penalty. Now, Bernie Fraser was the man that came back to deny Carlton the possible try, but there must have been obstruction off the ball after Old chipped through. Back from Cotton, neatly smuggled to Steve Smith. Well, a score then that must really give the lift 
to the North's effort. First blood. Siddall highest. Smith having to take the punishment there with Tony Neary going through. But it's a penalty to New Zealand. And Donaldson leaves it for Richard Wilson, who is going to attempt another really long penalty goal from the halfway line this time. But wide out, so it'll take a really massive kick. Richard Wilson also asking uh, Andy Dalton to come up and hold the ball just with that index finger to prevent it blowing over as he runs up. 48 points on this tour in his four matches. This is then a chance to level affairs at three points all. Never got hold of it at all, like his first attempt, dropping just inside the North 22. Utley mishandles and gives away the scrummage. Kind of error that you can ill afford to make against a side of the efficiency of these All Blacks. So they get the put in, 18 metres out. But Andy Simpson takes a vital strike against the head. But there's trouble now, can Mori control it for the try? And, in fact, Murray unable to control the ball before it ran dead. Smith in all manner of trouble then. Let's see uh, how that happened. The ball loosely out, Smith overrunning the ball and see how fast Murray comes through. Tries to control it and, in fact, it loses his control altogether. He knocks it on, so it's the 22. Back from the dropout, the ball into touch on the North's 10-metre line. Dalton with the throw. And a bit of a let-off for the North. But they regroup, Beaumont sets it up. Colin White in there, feeds Smith. Looks for the break, goes inside Murray. Richard Wilson. long, Slemon has time, takes it well, and safely away. <laughs> Several inconclusive lineouts with the ball bouncing first one side then the other. The North had this one, Steve Smith to Peter Dixon. It comes with Beaumont standing off. Good tackle by Murray. Back to Smith again, but another hand from Graham Murray reaches out to bring down Steve Smith. Diving over the top go the All Blacks. But that was typical of Murray. Doesn't rest on his laurels after a great tackle, but looks to the next one, which he did then with Steve Smith. So it's Alan Olden. Placing the ball for the kick to touch. That's good enough. A dank, dark day. And just the one penalty between these sides after 26 minutes since the North break away again from Beaumont to Neary. Two England captains. Now Steve Smith with a lovely dummy. The opening is there. Carlton gets the chip through. Fraser goes in for the early tackle. The North still drive on. That's Tony Bond. And it finally shoots out into touch. And Bernie Fraser, I think, was a shade lucky then as he anticipated the possession being taken by John Carlton and went in for the tackle before Carlton in fact touched the ball so pressure in the All Blacks 22 again Donaldson 
Really hoisted that one, it's drifted well infield. Carlton's there, Old takes it. Mexted through fast. Back to Donaldson, beautifully worked. Eddie Dunn. And Slemon had drifted infield, but the kick was too long. Well, here's a player who has really come on a pace in a year since we saw him last year as understudy to Doug Bruce. It's on the halfway line. Beaumont's beautiful feed to Steve Smith. Alan O, Tony Barr. <laughs> Referee may be looking for advantage. None comes the All Blacks way, so they get the foot in at the scrummage right in midfield, just short of the North's 10 metre line. Eddie Dunn standing directly behind, so poised to go either side. Murray Taylor drifts across to take it inside Dunn. It's done now. Chips through for Stu Wilson. Tony Bond, good fall. North 22. And I think the North came into that from an offside position, give away a penalty, and Murray signals directly to Richard Wilson to have a go at goal. Well, the prolific kicking of Richard Wilson on this tour, not being repeated today, he's had three penalty attempts already and missed them all. 26-year-old from Christchurch and Canterbury on his third tour for New Zealand. So another chance to level the scores. Struck it well in the orthodox style, but missed on direction, just left of the post this time. So New Zealand getting their chances, but for once not taking them. So that's the scoreline, the eight and a half minutes to half time. Still the one penalty sees the North in the lead. And they can take consolation too, of course, that they're playing into the elements in this first half. Though on a day when the wind's gusting as it is, it's really no great favour to anyone. North's 10 metre line. Tap from Siddle, cleaned up by Beaumont. Loose pass for once from Steve Smith. Bond held, Neary in support. Turns, makes it available. It'll be smuggled back now. It's Beaumont that takes it on. Fed back to Smith. Bolton's offside. That's another probing kick down the touchline. Wilson races back with his winger, Stu Wilson. Slamming up. Referee plays advantage. Slemon, can he gather it cleanly? It's inside for Steve Smith. Great advantage played by the referee and the try for Steve Smith. Well, a classic example of advantage play working out to perfection. It was Slemon who came through to hound the luckless Stu Wilson in all manner of trouble. The pass to Steve Smith. He narrows the angle for the conversion and the Northern Division are cock -a hoop So a good lead for the North with six minutes to half time. Beaumont playing like a man inspired now. Steve Smith to Peter Dixon. Smith again from Beaumont. Mexted. Well, a real test now for the character of these ninth All Blacks. Seven points adrift. And of course, defending an unbeaten record. Ken Stewart, Murray Mexted, Graham Murray, the trio at the tail of this lineup. Ten metres outside the North 22. Down the tack was from Mexted. But free kick against the Northern Division. Bit of decision-making here by Graham Murray as to the nature of this penalty. Tap ball, Donaldson 
Attempted drop goal by Richard Wilson. Struck it well. Off the post. Down to Andy Simpson. O'Brien in support and the danger's cleared. And that really was uh, a bit of bad luck for Richard Wilson, who hasn't had the best of luck today with his four missed penalties and that drop goal rebounding off the post. All Blacks ball. Hayden, Donaldson, checks, came back inside to his pack. Mexted goes to the scrum half position. The All Blacks use the hands in the ruck. Mexted hurls the ball away and concedes a further 10 metres. Mexted throwing the ball away in disgust there and away from the north. So a good decision by referee Alan Hosey. Steve Smith using that left foot to the right-hand touchline. Useful it is to have a specialist left-footed kicker for the touchline kicks on the right-hand side of the field. And Alan Old, of course, his right foot down the left-hand touch. Just short, then, of that halfway line. Utley's tap back. Beaumont's taken it. The North drive over. And there's an all-black uh, pair of legs in the way. And the hand came in as well by the North to try and help it back. And it looks as though uh, Wilson this time is going to just play it downfield. Adds another 15 metres or so. Second most capped player in English rugby history, Tony Neary alongside Ken Stewart. Three England captains at the tail of that line-out. Down from Hayden, Donaldson. He's not really latching on to Dunn too well today. Murray Taylor in trouble as Tony Wright came through. But the referee, in fact, had been playing advantage for the North, jumping off a shoulder in the line-out. And they have a penalty and a chance now of getting points on the board. As we come up to half time, we're now into injury time at the end of this first half. So Richard Wilson has yet another chance to get New Zealand's first points. Four penalties and a drop goal attempt he's missed, which certainly is very much out of character. This could lift the All Blacks if he gets it. Struck it well, but. Well, they're just drifting either to the right or the left. One of those days that happen now and again to even the most accurate of kickers. And Richard Wilson really uh, having a bad day with the boot. So it's a happy position that the North find themselves in as they come into the second minute of injury time, the end of this first half. But another penalty is given. And again, I think the North guilty of using uh, hands, maybe, at close quarters to try and help the ball back. And Richard Wilson is called up once more. I wonder what he's thinking now. Well, in fact, it's a dummy move that they've used once or twice on this tour. Wilson taking the tap ball. It's Ken Stewart held short of the 22. Donaldson tries to open it again. It finds Murray Taylor. And an unhappy ending to this half for the All Blacks as a great cheer goes up for this uh, quite unashamedly biased crowd of 10,000 here barring those All Black supporters who are in the crowd seeing the North deservedly and with a tremendous spirited effort taking the lead at half time seven points to nil young boys like rooks in the trees and in as precarious a position as the All Blacks are at the start of this second half playing now into the elements and starting off this second half through Richard Wilson. So the North bidding to follow in their red shirts as Munster on the last All Blacks tour in beating the All Blacks. Seven points is their lead, but the All Blacks are 80-minute players and it's a long way from full time yet. Back into the North 22.
and immediately into the attack, the All Blacks. Bedding down about 18 metres from the Northern Division's line. Mark Donaldson, who hasn't been having the happiest of times in finding Eddie Dunn with his service. This time, safe enough. Murray Taylor checks for the inside pass to Stu Wilson. Driven on by Ken Stewart. It's there. Eddie Dunn, Stu Wilson, good tackle by Slemon. Eddie Dunn backing up. Looks inside to Mexted. But that was not forward. And far more errors in this game, I think, by the All Blacks than in the rest of their tour matches put together. Still in the North's 22. Steve Smith, the try scorer. Waits for the referee to put the scrummage straight. And the North holding their own in the set piece. Dick Dixon giving good protection to Smith. That's Slemon. Not finding touch this time. Kept in by Stu Wilson. Good run. Tap tackle by Neary brought him down. But it's fed back to Donaldson. Ken Stewart. Inside is Donaldson once more. Then Richard Wilson, but the ball intercepted by the North. And it was Andy Simpson, the hooker, that did the honours then, saving what could have been a vital inside pass. Andy Simpson of Sale and Staffordshire, but qualifying, of course, for the North by his club qualification. Jim Siddall beaten this time by uh, Andy Hayden. Donaldson to Dunn, long feed to Murray Taylor. Oh, beautiful, but not quite. Neary just held on to him enough. Incisive runner when he gets a chance. It's well won back by the Northern Division. Steve Smith, though, doesn't find touch. Instead, it's Stu Wilson. Lovely swerving run, down by Tony, by Tony Bond. But the referees decided that that was high. And it's a penalty. And yet again, Richard Wilson has the chance, and I should think he must be almost quaking in his shoes this time. With five penalty attempts going adrift so far. Well, one goes back to the first match of this tour when it was really Richard Wilson who kept New Zealand alive with five penalties and the conversion. But today he's missed five so far. And the All Blacks desperately need these three points now. At last he does it. And that will bring him and the All Blacks much wanted relief. Five minutes then of the second half played and the lead now just four points to the north. Dunn just running away from his own goal line, sliced it badly, Utley waits, supported by Steve Smith, checks to come inside, makes the breakthrough, puts it down for his pack, Cotton picks up, Dixon feeds, Tony Bond, reverse pass, beautiful switch to his sale partner Tony Wright, into the All Blacks 22, again Dixon leads the way, it's back for Smith. Beaumont tries to keep it in play and there's real spirit and determination in this northern effort bidding to become only the third English side to beat the All Blacks in regional representative matches twenty meters out from New Zealand's goal line Neary threw fast onto Donaldson but the line-out throw was not straight enough. There's the All Blacks 22. There's Donaldson waits for the feed. Not straight into the scrimmage. Free kick to the Northern Division, so perhaps a chance for a drop goal here by Alan Old. Steve Smith, too old, the drop goal attempt, miscued.
normally a very dependable drop goal merchant, Alan Old. Eddie Dunn then to restart with the dropout. It's Hayden through first. And what support the uh, crowd here bursting at the seams with officially 9,999 people into this little ground. But I think there look like a few more of those, especially in the trees. Cheering the Northern Division on. Yorkshireman cheering ten men of Lancashire as well in this side. That's O'Brien. Kept it in play, runs up to put his team on side. Donaldson goes down, it's Mexted that gathers it in. Peter Dixon there, number eight, belying his years. 36 years now of tremendous rugby since his uh, playing career started. Alan Old. Tony Bond through, but it's taken by Wright. Slips it back. The North just about on the 22-metre line. Steve Smith to Alan Old through for Carlton the clash with Bernie Fraser but Carlton retrieves the ball good acceleration five metres out Simpson Steve Smith an overlap a try for Tony Bond in the corner a moment of heroism for Tony Bond and for the Northern Division who really have set the New Zealand All Blacks back on their heels the crowd in ecstasy here was the initial burst by John Carlton that set it up because he managed to make that ball available so well there was Simpson's part then Steve Smith and the overlap had created itself with Tony Bond out on the right flank for the second try and a crucial score that sees the North go 11 points to three into the lead and further trouble for New Zealand now with uh, experienced hooker Andy Dalton in the wars player who has been a key figure in recent years in the All Blacks front row. And it's Alan Old with the conversion attempt from almost the touchline. Struck it well, it's curled in and rebounds off the post. And who knows, that could be a critical moment for the North. But that is the margin now of their lead and the crowd are going beside themselves with delight and with further support for these northern heroes. So what can these ninth All Blacks do about it? Dunn restarts. Could this be the great day that English and uh, indeed I think British rugby has been hoping for? An old so steady and reliable as a footballing fly half puts the line out to the halfway line as on the near side Andy Dalton leaves the field Andy Dalton there the test hooker for the All Blacks and clearly with some worrying leg injury further problems then to the All Blacks who really are now reeling under this onslaught. Belmont steals it, but the whistle's gone. They'll have to come back. He hasn't heard it yet. They drive on. And indeed, I'm sure neither he nor any of the uh, Northern Division's red shirts there wanted to hear that whistle. An offside decision given against the North. As Beaumont stormed down the field towards that All Blacks goal line. This time the All Blacks opt to run it, Donaldson, two dummies. Mexted on the burst, held by Neary on the halfway line. 
Ken Stewart. And what work Beaumont is getting through. That was his tackle. Steve Smith, Peter Dixon, Tony Wright for Carlton. Knocked on. And there's real confidence now in this Northern's effort. Unrelentingly taking the game to the All Blacks and even running at them too when most had expected a doer forward battle. That's their ball, Dixon, Steve Smith, held by Dunn, flips it to Neary. They're there in strength. And finally, the referee blows his whistle and the North get the put in with that drive forward about 18 metres from the All Blacks line. And there's the replacement hooker, Peter Sloan, standing by while Ken Stewart, in fact, uh, takes up the hooking duties between uh, Johnston and Spears. But the North controlling this ball. Peter Dixon, Steve Smith, Carlton, inside one, outside Donaldson almost. The drive towards the line by Utley just held a metre or so short. Can the All Blacks withstand it? Peter Sloan of North Auckland then comes in at a vital moment with this line out right on the All Blacks line, a metre or so from it. And they've cut their line out. Fleming two, Hayden at the back. Johnston and Spears, the other two. It's Fleming that's got up for that one. Donaldson behind his own goal line. Puts it safely away and gives the All Blacks a breathing space. Deflected by Beaumont. Smith. Cotton couldn't hold it. Dixon does. It's there again. Steve Smith did well because his pass to Alan Old was blocked by an all-black figure. So he hung on to it, but in fact, the North give away a penalty for obstructing the ball coming back. It's Donaldson now, pivoting on himself. Steve Smith back there. Mexted, though, keeps it in. Tucks the ball away and runs at the opposition. Beaumont and Colin White and Jim Siddle rather bring him down. This great new find at number eight for the All Blacks who scored that uh, marvellous try against Scotland. The last man up there, fiery figure, six foot four, 15 stones. And the great new number eight for New Zealand. It's the All Blacks 10 metre line. Donaldson, hounded by Steve Smith, done, trying to make something of it, bound in by the red shirts of the Northern Division. And they've won it. Siddall, Smith, Dixon stands off. The tackle by Ken Stewart, Murray through to spoil. That's scrum half Siddall, the second row. Tony Wright to Kevin O'Brien. And that really wasn't too fluent by the North. So is this little market town of Otley going to be the scene of uh, a great rugby triumph in English rugby history? The All Blacks are far from beaten yet though. The mistake by Bernie Fraser allows the North to regroup and counter. Steve Smith, Alan Old. Donaldson covering. O'Brien challenging. Tony Bond through fast. What a tackle. Well, here's a man with a point to prove today, having lost his England place after three internationals last season, Tony Bond of Sale and Lancashire, bidding to recapture that berth today. And already with a try, and there a superb tackle. Seven or eight metres out. And this northern side playing like men inspired. Neary at the tail, Cotton. Now Beaumont, held by his opposite captain, Graham Murray. Smith to Old. Tony Wright trying to find the way through himself, has support from Bond and he's got another score. Tony Bond, the two-try hero, surely that puts the North out of sight.
and the trees are swaying as the crowd give vent to their excitement. The chance of easy rays to the skies. 15 points on the board, which came in the end like this, the last score. The long, beautiful floating pass from Alan Old to Tony Wright. And there his fellow sail centre partner dives over and the All Blacks could not stop him. And still the crowd, a buzz of excitement with three cracking tries by the Northern Division. No doubting the way they've deserved this lead. Alan Old with the conversion attempt. It's a good kick. It's over. It's all going right for the Northern Division now. Seventeen points to three, and the All Blacks are facing defeat in the face. Twenty games ago, the All Blacks were last beaten in Britain by the heroes of Munster. Seven matches on this tour and seven victories including the international against Scotland. And this is the same 15 players with Donaldson, the replacement that finished the game at Murrayfield last weekend. And here they are trailing by 14 points with 22 minutes played of this second half. On the halfway line, the line out. Siddall losing it out this time, done. Murray Taylor, O'Brien covering from full back. Oh, it's all working for the North now. The loose chip ahead, bouncing nicely into touch for Kevin O'Brien. This find at full back for Lancashire. Brad Johnston bursting through the line. Luckily tries to hold him, it's a good drive. Fed back for Donaldson. Dunn, Murray Taylor, Bond racing through had sights on his man from the moment he touched the ball and bowled him a good five metres away Donaldson again straight through the arms of Gary Cunningham Fraser having to take man and ball together Richard Wilson O'Brien misjudging that one as he turned and Wilson retrieves it Murray in support held by uh, Roger Utley, the drive on by Ken Stewart, the All Blacks with total commitment now, Donaldson, Stu Wilson, Stu Wilson inside two men, inside O'Brien the full back and that's a lovely individual try by Stu Wilson, he's not really had a single chance to show his class, his world class ability on the wing but that time he took his opportunity with both hands, but is it all too late, this was how it came, Donaldson, and there's the first jink inside. I think it was Utley and Cotton together, finally inside the fullback, and a lovely solo effort by Stu Wilson for his third try of the tour. So, eight minutes of time plus injury time to be added on. And Richard Wilson, with the conversion attempt, makes no mistake that maybe he'll be ruining all those missed penalties of the first half. 17 points to nine, so the game is not over yet, but the All Blacks still have to score at least twice. Three tries to one, 17 points to nine, seven minutes to go. As the gloom really falls on this Otley ground, the first time they've ever had a touring team to visit and could it be a, a great historical day for them to enjoy forevermore. Steve Smith. Well, I can't believe that the England selectors can have been other than impressed by his performance today at the base of this northern pack. Worth recalling too, I think that uh, four of the players in this side were in the Northwest Counties side that beat the All Blacks back in '72: Dixon, Neary, Smith, and Fran Cotton. And it's the North that still take the game to the All Blacks. 
Bernie Fraser, perhaps a touch of nerves, but he didn't knock it on. Neary's been everywhere. And that was another superb tackle as he stopped Fraser in his tracks with Tony Bond. The North have the put in on the All Black 22. Less than six minutes to go, plus injury time now. And attack, I suppose, is the best port form of defence. And the North still taking the game to the All Blacks. They run it now. Alan Old shows it, feeds straight to Carlton. Tap tackle there by Ken Stewart, did the work. That's Tony Wright, the new centre, who's done so well with Sale and alongside Tony Bond this season. And the All Blacks getting over robust. Concede a penalty. About 12 metres from their own line, and I think referee Alan Hosey was indicating the use of the boot then. And those two great competitors, Utley and Dixon, the last two up. And Bernie Fraser has, I think, been guilty of arguing with the referee. He's given them an extra 10 metres on this kick. Not that uh, I think if they kick it for goal, it would matter, but is this going to be supreme confidence by the Northern Division? They're going to run it, taking courage in both hands. The pivot move, Simpson to Beaumont, sets up the wedge. Neary acts the link man to Steve Smith to Tony Bond. Support not quite getting to him in time for the feedback. About eight metres out. And going forward, the North get the put in as well. And the crowd still with plenty of voice left to urge a special effort in this set-piece scrum. In front of the post. Dixon controls it. Brought down by Murray and Mexted. The pick up by Donaldson. Slemon was so close to the interception. The personal duel between Slemon and Wilson develops. The ball was knocked on. And there are the real signs of tension now. The All Blacks getting desperate as they stare defeat in the face. Three minutes plus injury time to go. And the All Blacks, 12 metres out from their goal line. Donaldson. Mexted gets the feed to him. And Donaldson forced just to put it away. Two minutes to go. 17 points to nine. The Northern Division on the threshold of a famous victory as the dust descends on this Otley ground. The All Blacks, it's all going wrong for them now. Murray Taylor grasps it off the floor from Donaldson's pass, but the knock-on is given. Eight points is the margin. And surely that's uh, not going to get bridged now. Alan Old from Steve Smith floats it through for Slemon to chase. Slemon so close as the two Wilsons go in. The ball drifts forward. It's the, a judge to knock on as Bond repossessed it. But surely the story of this game has been the pressure, the tremendous effort of this magnificent eight forwards as they now send them reeling again the north drive towards the goal line it comes to old can he round up the goal oh, he's done it that seals it for sure and it came from this loose situation where steve smith i think dug the ball out once more and alan old managed to pick it up off the deck and drive through the tackles for the try that clinches it beyond doubt O'Brien misses the conversion attempt, but it really matters not as we come now to the end of 40 minutes in this second half. 21 points to nine. 
and that is a remarkable scoreline by whatever criteria you care to judge it. Done. Restarts. Steve Smith to Alan Old. And that really is coolness itself in this cauldron of excitement. Alan Old just banging it down the touchline a good 40 metres. One minute of injury time played. We're on the halfway line. It can be only seconds rather than minutes now from the final whistle that will bring the Northern Division a famous victory. Donaldson to Dunn, though. The All Blacks still prepared to have a go. Murray Taylor to Cunningham. It hasn't worked well for them today. But they've been matched and more than matched up front. Donaldson again. Murray Taylor over the head of Slemon as darkness descends quickly now. And as the lights of the neighbouring houses and shops come on, the lucky people here in Otley will remember this day. The referee looks at his whistle and his watch and blows the whistle for the end of the match, which sees the Northern Division triumphant. Not just a victory, but a victory of conviction. Four tries to one. 21 points to nine and the Northern Division become only the third English regional side in history to down the All Blacks and they did it in style and they've given the English rugby new heart today in Otley. Well, Bill, I don't think I've ever seen such a big smile on your face. Everything went to plan. That's right, yes, it uh, exactly to plan. We realised we had to take the game to them and uh, that's what happened. We, uh, we got the early lead and they had to play rugby after that and uh, we capitalised on their mistakes. Could you really believe it was going to be that kind of margin at the end, you know? I mean, it was a victory of not just hard graft, it was style as well, wasn't it? That's right, yes. Everything clicked for us and it is just unbelievable that. Uh, I never imagined it be that score. What was the master plan? I mean, uh... You were going to take them on up front, obviously, and play it from there. Yeah, we, we planned that we'd scrummage them as much as we could and then sort of drive close and then uh, let these glamour boys have the ball. How does this rate in, in your sort of rugby career? Oh, the best one I've ever had this. And Can't what remember. about England now? Well, you know, it's uh, going to be hard because they realise that it's going to be uh, uh, some sort of a game, but uh, it's nice to get one under the belt, first of all. Well, I mean, in Yorkshire and cheering Lancashire lads on as well. It was the North today, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. You can uh, you can see now it's raining. Ideal conditions. Uh, <laughs> the crowd behind us all the way. Great. Oh, great. So you go into next week with oozing confidence, no doubt. Oh yes, very much so. Tremendous, Bill. What an effort. Yeah. Steve Smith for you. A fairy tale season, I suppose. And I think you've played the All Blacks twice and won twice. What a record. Yeah, can't see the problem now. He's played two, one, two. <laughs> <laughs> How did you find it? I mean, uh, you must have felt that you had the, sort of the world's best pack in front of you today. Oh, yeah, it was terrific. I mean, the wind against in the first half was a howling gale. And the only way we could have played it was close, drive it to them, try and kick it over the top. And our lads, well, the ball they gave me was fantastic, considering the condition of the ball. It was like a bar of soap. Well, you, you had a, a youngster outside you at fly half. How did you get on with Alan Old? <laughs> well, his ears were flapping into the wind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. But he was all right down here. <laughs> well, the man, I suppose, who everyone will recall from today's match, apart from the other 14, is Tony Bond. Tell us about the scores. Well, I think I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. They, they were all very close to the line. I don't think I could have gone 25, but... Uh, Can you talk us through them, through them one by one? Well, the first one... Uh, Johnny <laughs> uh, Carlson had gone on the right, come back inside uh, and got stopped near the line. Then the ball came back and Smithy fed it right to me and I just happened to be on the wing there, just had to dive over. The, uh, the second one was uh, when I think we were going left to right and uh, Tony Wright made a bit of a break inside and passed to me and uh, I smelt whitewash. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're calling you the silver fox and the fox was certainly, I've never seen you tackle more people in your life. Well, it was an enjoyable game and had another youngster alongside me, Peter Dixon, so he was doing all the running for me. <laughs> well, Tony, uh, I mean, this, you know, you've been in a few great epic occasions, victories over international countries. Of course, the, the North West Counties were 72. How, how does this rate in your record book? Well, I think it was a convincing win. We played some very good, aggressive, attacking rugby, and uh, I don't think anyone could argue it wasn't a fluke, it wasn't a question of penalties, and therefore it was more satisfying than the others, I think. 
Both you and Peter have probably seen more of the All Blacks uh, than anybody uh, in English rugby these days. Peter, I mean, it was it was uh, clinical, really, wasn't it, in, in the end, the Northern's performance? Yeah, uh, you know, it's always a pleasure to play the All Blacks. Um, I think this was by far the, the best uh, game that we've had, really, in this country. Uh, we've done a lot of work, you know, sorting out where the sort of strengths and weaknesses were. We had a uh, game against them last year when we could have won it. Uh, then we had a trip in the summer with the Northwest Counties to South Africa. I think uh, nine or ten of the boys were on that. And that made a big difference to us because we did a hell of a lot of groundwork then of driving, getting over the ball, banging it back, driving again close and trying to cut out their uh, centres from knocking our guys down out there. Once we got driving through, leave it to these boys to run them in. That must now mean perhaps a turning point in, in, in English rugby at the international level, don't you think? Well, it's any, early yeah. days yet, but... <laughs> well, it is early days. Obviously, the All Blacks are going to work uh, on things this week and uh, an international's a, a different game at Twickenham. They raise it for a test match and so on. So, obviously, we're very pleased with the performance today. Something to build on. And I'm sure Bill will organise uh, next week. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, not gonna be, it's going to be a different story at Twickenham. Well, congratulations from... from uh, everyone who was watching today because I'm sure they're as proud of you as uh, the 10,000 odd packed into the ground here were today. Bill, a lasting memory of the day from you. Uh, when Oldie went over at the end there to score. <laughs> yes. to me. He came short and went over. Fabulous. A moment to save a well done one and all, all 15 of the side. So a day of history and I'm sure a long night of celebration here in Ottilie after that magnificent performance by all 15 players in the Northern Division team. And now, of course, our attention will turn towards Twickenham, where next week the All Blacks play their final match of their tour against the England side. And we wait with special interest now after today's performance for the announcement of that England team. And of course, the match next weekend will be showing you all the highlights of on the Rugby Special on BBC Two at the slightly earlier time of 3.30. Till then, from us all and a very happy Otley, good night. <laughs>